Les Brown and I were chatting one day. If you want to be successful, do not seek success. Procrastinate. I need to deal with that. Seek to become a person of value. Don't seek success. Make yourself valuable and they'll pay for you. Make yourself just like gold. In other words, develop a gift in your life. Become so valuable to everybody else that they will pay you to perform it. The key to achieving your vision is discipline. And this scripture found in Proverbs 29, it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Blessed is the man who keeps the law. Where there is no vision, people throw off restraint. That's what that word perish means. Deciding to keep your word. If you just decide, I'm going to keep my word. If I say something, I'm going to do it regardless. Being more considerate, more trusting, more disciplined, being less fearful, being more adventurous. Find something that you can look at your life that you say, hey, I know I've got a problem in this area. Being late, I need to take care of that. Procrastinating, I need to deal with that. Not taking care of business, being seriously not serious, creating an imbalance in my life where I'm spending more time looking at television or having social fun and not spending enough time working on me. See, most people, ladies and gentlemen, spend more time working on their jobs than they'd spend working on themselves. So the key to your life is finding a vision that imposes discipline on you. In essence, vision is the source of discipline. Discipline is the root of leadership it actually is the the very nature that attracts people to you a disciplined person naturally begins to attract people because people admire discipline in other people that's why we go to see athletes perform we really admire the discipline that they put themselves through if you do the same thing as a person people will then begin to believe what you say as you begin to look at your emotional, your spiritual and intellectual development, how many books did you read? How many seminars did you attend? How many classes did you take to begin to develop yourself professionally, to improve your craft or your skill? How many new things did you learn? What are the things about your past that has influenced you right now? What's your philosophy of life? What are your beliefs, things that you feel very strongly about? What are some of the things that you have picked up along the way that You've been doing them for so long you think that they're you, that you need to begin to re-examine them and perhaps get them out of your life. See, a lot of things we're doing, we do unconsciously because we picked it up somewhere in life. Your very life of discipline creates trust. People trust a person who they perceive to be disciplined. This is why athletes also are used to promote and advertise and market products. People, they are selling the discipline of that athlete. We think that if we wear Nike shoes, we will jump like Mike. So you are buying the discipline that he has in his life that produced the kind of professional athleticism that he is known for. And so you are really um, impacted by the discipline. The same thing is true about you. If you remain consistent and disciplined in your life, you'll find people will come just to watch you. And they'll want to actually pay to watch you. They bring their offerings and their tithes to watch you do what you do. It's incredible. So discipline is powerful. And according to the Bible, discipline comes from vision. A man or woman without a clear vision for their lives lives a very loose life. But a man with a vision, they live a very narrow life. Very important. When a man or woman has a vision, their life becomes very, very tight. Why? because vision simplifies life. What are the things that you need to let go? Some things that have cost you pain, that's stifling your growth and development. What are those things? Take a brave look at your life. Look at your life right now where it is. So let me ask you some questions. As you begin to look out on the future, look out on this year, let's take personal inventory. What has brought you here? Did you achieve the goals that you set out to achieve? What part of your life or what things did you do that you don't want to be a part of your life? Are there any people as you begin to look at your life and look at where you want to go and what you want to do, are there any people that might be some dead weight 
that you need to think about unloading because what you have found through that relationship that it's more toxic than it is nourishing it's more debilitating than it is empowering and so now you've got to make a decision see many of us won't be able to move forward because we're not taking true inventory of our lives when you capture a vision it simplifies everything because vision controls all of your choices after that once you know where you're going you also automatically know what roads won't take you there if you know what to do you automatically know what you shouldn't do vision defines your what to do in life because vision gives you your address it shows you your destination where we get our word destiny from your destiny dictates your decisions so life becomes simple uh, if someone offers you something and it doesn't collaborate in its unity with your vision it's easy to say no see but without a vision it's tough for you to refuse things you were not born to do everything we somehow have this attitude that we have a lot of things to do in life I disagree I used to think so myself you don't have a lot to do in life isn't that wonderful when you study people who have been successful in their lives and eventually became influential I mean all these people you think their lives are they're very simple people there's a term that is normally associated with them this one thing I do see you got to get to the point where you're only living for one thing and life becomes simple your gifts will take you places that you'll never begin to imagine so I used to be the jack of all trades and master of none I used to do a lot of things one year I decided to do one thing well I looked at all of my talents and I decided the strongest one my ability as a speaker that's the one I'm going to focus on only when I decided to focus that I begin to reap the rewards of my talent and then after you do that you can begin to expand and use the other talents that you have people who discovered vision they live longer they live healthier there's no stress stress comes from not knowing what to do Jesus said something to Martha that changed my life Martha is like most of us we live on assumptions Martha had a visitation from God he came to visit a house she assumed he was hungry see that's the problem we think we know what God wants us to do vision is from God you got to report to him submit to him and stay still until you are clear of the revelation because without that revelation there is no self-discipline so as you look at your life you're saying I'm not getting what I want as you begin to look toward the future begin to know that whatever it takes for you to create that you've got that in you you got that you've got genius in you you've got goodness in you you've got creativeness in you if you decide to take the initiative to change the current quality of your life I say to you that you will find that the universe is on your side now I want you to think about five things as if you had the courage to do them it will give you a feeling of satisfaction and self-respect think of five things that if you had the courage to do those things you would feel a tremendous feeling of satisfaction within Martha ended up cooking for God and he wasn't hungry and then she became angry because other people were not joining her in her busyness which was not appropriate in other words she tried to get other people involved in things that was not God's will at the time I wonder if you're doing that and then she came to God and says look why don't other people come and help me send my sister to help me now the answer Jesus gave you must study it was a leadership answer he said mom you are so busy about many things and that's what your life is like all of you who have known me for the past 20 years you know that I, have, I haven't changed I've grown but I haven't changed there's a difference between growing and changing I grow in my knowledge and my experience and my expand but I haven't changed I am still the same guy with the same message that makes my life simple 
He says, you're busy about so many things. You're trying to do everything. You're trying to be everybody and trying to be everything to everybody. And then he said to her, Martha, big words, only few things are necessary. Let me ask you a question. Are the things you've done for the past 11 months, were they necessary? Don't answer it, just think about it. You might be shocked at your answer. As you begin to look at yourself and look at where you want to go with your life, it's very important for you to ask yourself a question as you look at various areas of your life. Is what you are doing right now, is it giving you what you want? If it's not giving you what you want, it's going to take courage to decide to do something differently. It takes courage to enjoy yourself. What are some of the self-defeating behaviors that we become involved in that prevent most people from enjoying themselves? Some people develop the what's the use attitude. Why bother? Some people have the I really don't care. And they convince themselves that they don't care and they don't feel anything. And after a while, they really don't feel anything. Their lives are empty. The question then is, what is necessary? How, you, how do you define necessary? It's, it's answered in the Bible very clearly. It's easy to find what's necessary. According to Paul, the apostle, is defined like this. Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He said, all things are permitted for me to do. I can do anything I want. He says, but not all things benefit me. Interesting. 70 years is so short, you ain't got time to make a mistake anymore. And if you're 40 years old, you are already over the 50% mark. So you better make sure you clear this thing quickly about what your vision is and define it so you waste no more days. Life is very valuable, ladies and gentlemen. Time is very valuable. And it's very fragile. You've got to decide to do what you can right now and don't delay. Not taking care of business, being seriously not serious, creating an imbalance in my life where I'm spending more time looking at television or having social fun and not spending enough time working on me. See, most people, ladies and gentlemen, spend more time working on their jobs than they spend working on themselves. They work harder on their jobs than they work on themselves. And whatever we achieve in life, whatever we create, whatever we're able to manifest comes out of the human mind. This is no time for experimentation. This is a time for intentional living. You've got to know where you're going now. This is too late to take detours and go through corners you ain't supposed to go through and wondering how to get there. You better know your destination because you ain't getting no younger. See? There's some people in your life who are not necessary. Some of you got the wrong company. And they've eaten up your time, wasting your time eating with them and playing with them and watching TV with them and going to clubs with them and you know going out to, to, to conferences with them and all this stuff and all this stuff and God is saying look you're still not getting where you're supposed to get to these people are distractions a lot of people don't ever do the things they're capable of doing because they allow themselves to go alone with the crowd following the crowd Many people have things they want to do and, and they find themselves in relationships with people who are addicted to mediocrity and they allow their behavior to influence their behavior. Many people don't do it because of the fact that they allow their lack of self-confidence to immobilize them. I remember when I wanted to go into business for years, that was an agonizing thought in my mind. I wouldn't try it because I didn't believe that I could make it. Some people say, well, it's really not worth the hassle just too hard it doesn't bother me anymore the fact that I'm not living out my dream the fact that I'm capable of doing more and I'm not doing it the fact that I'm content but I'm not fulfilled the fact that I'm not living my dream some of the books you have been buying are not necessary romance novels magazines fashion I mean they don't get you to your dream you see, when you have a vision, it simplifies life. You can walk up to a bookstore shelf and know exactly what books not to buy. See, vision dictates everything. The statement here, I'm sure you know it well, right? Jack of all trades, master of none. Everything that you do is supposed to be motivated by your vision. Everything. Vision is supposed to be 
the source of your human motivation it simplifies your life do you know why most people are actually poor I know why they're poor poverty it's not a problem it's a result most people are poor because no one knows who they are what do you mean by that vision helps you identify yourself before the people in the world and because they know who you are they know what to come to you for make yourself a person of value if someone had to think about something that reminded them of you what would it be that's a serious question because if they never think about you that means you have never made yourself valuable you have become a jack of too many trades so you master nothing what is it that you've picked up somewhere in life that maybe be might be a liability to you what fear what beliefs that you're holding on to tenaciously that's no longer allowing your life to work it's not enabling you to produce the results that you want to produce in your life and you're still clinging to them there's some old behaviors that just won't fit what are the events what are the circumstances what are the people that have shaped you just thinking just thinking what are the things that you need to let go some things that have cost you pain that's stifling your growth and development what are those things what do they think about when they call your name your problem is they don't think about you at all become so good in an area that they can't ignore you the world is filled with general people you come to this conference to cease being general you're not in the general group anymore you you gotta go home and decide for the next 20 years I'm gonna carve out a niche for myself that they're gonna have to find me and can't ignore me he goes on to the courage of one's convictions the courage to do what one thinks is right what are the benefits of your acting courageously whatever it is that you've identified write the benefits down and then focus on them focus on the benefits not on the liabilities, not on your fears. Focus on the benefits. That which you hold in consciousness tends to manifest itself. Think about how good you feel. Think about the level increased self-respect, the sense of self-worth that you'll feel. How good you'll feel getting up in the morning, looking yourself in the mirror because you're taking life on. Vision is what gives you this unique discovery about what you're supposed to master. Sight is the ability to see things as they are, but vision is the capacity to see things as they could be. All true visions will be tested for authenticity. If your vision is truly from God, life will test it to prove that it's authentic. So get used to the idea of challenges if your vision is real. It doesn't come to stop your vision, it came to test it, to prove it that it's true, if it's real. If a vision is terminated by trials, it was probably not authentic. Sometimes your vision may take you to prison, but you got to go there with it and come out with it. Looking at the word courage, Webster says the attitude of facing and dealing with anything recognized is dangerous, difficult or painful instead of withdrawing from it. As you begin to look at where you want to go and take personal inventory, it's going to be very uncomfortable. That's why most people don't do it. It's very painful to admit your shortcomings, to admit your weaknesses. It's very painful to do that. It's much easier to withdraw from that and just ignore it. He goes on to the courage of one's convictions, the courage to do what one thinks is right. As you begin to look at yourself and look at where you want to go with your life, it's very important for you to ask yourself a question as you look at various areas of your life. Is what you are doing right now, is it giving you what you want? Whatever you're supposed to do is not supposed to be erased. That's why I am convinced you were not created just to make a living and pay bills. You were created to give life and make a difference with your gift somewhere. That's why you came to this place. Here are some things that vision will do when you discover it. Vision will choose your future. Vision will choose your friends. Vision will choose your library. Vision will choose your use of time. 
Vision will choose your use of energy. Vision will choose your priorities in life. Vision chooses your diet. Vision chooses your attitude in life. If you know where you're going, it tells you how to think. Vision chooses your life. It tells you what kind of life you're supposed to end up living. And so it chooses the kind of lifestyle you begin living right now. Vision dictates everything. People who have no vision in their lives, they throw off restraint. They throw off self-control. They have no idea. And next, vision dictates your values. When you know what you were born to do, it dictates how you should behave and what kind of standards you should live by. Right away, it changes everything. If you don't use your talents, if you don't use this power, this force that you have within you, you're going to lose it. If you have the ability to write, and if you don't write, you're going to lose the ability to write as well as you do right now. So whatever you want to do, whatever idea that you have, the longer that you're sitting on that idea, you are either creating or you are disintegrating. If you're not using it, your skills are diminishing every day. You were born to find out what is right for you. When you find out what is right for you, then that's, that's what's right for you. Everything else may be just good or wrong. So preoccupation with a good thing is no substitute for the right thing. Stay with what you're born to do. How much are you willing to pay to keep what you believe in?